Today I'll be installing vCenter server onto a RS710 server. The server is already running ESX 6.5 update 2. Um, <clears throat> here is the uh, information needed. So the host IP uh, is 220. vCenter server will have .250. Uh, I'll be using the latest vCenter available online. You know, I've just got this uh, home lab um, set up with the domain aussiecloud.local. Um, prerequisites for the install will be to add the DNS records for the vCenter server in ESX host. Um, also to make sure you're checking the interoper interoperability of the um, software and compatibility matrix. Afterwards, I'll just create the, D uh, the data center and cluster and add the host in. Um, afterwards, I'll, on another bit here, I'll go down the path of integrating with Active Directory and just going through the steps there. So first of all, I'll um, add the records into DNS. So if I come to DNS, um, already had it open here. I'm just going to add in the vCenter server. So the name for that one was going to be uh, VCSA01. And IP address 102.168.1.250. And obviously I can't test pinging it just yet, but we'll do that shortly. Um, so next of all, I have the download here ready to go. Okay, so you'll download the ISO from the VMware website. You can either extract that or just mount it. Uh, the file you want is in UI installer, Win32, and then just look down for installer application. Okay, click install. Next. 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 So this is where vCenter will be deployed to. So for here, um, there's no real need to put in the FQN, but you can if you wish. GTMO root. Next. And we'll just give it a root password. Um, this is a home lab, but uh, even for small businesses, usually tiny will be okay, up to 10 hosts, um, depending on your requirements. So I'll leave that as uh, default. Um, you can enable thin provision. I'll be doing that to save as much space as possible. Next. Static. Okay, so this is where you want to put in your fully qualified domain name. So VCSA01. Okay, so IP address to be used. 250. So at the end of the install, you should see it come up all green and 
find a guard to stage two. If you don't, this is a network issue. Um, I assigned the network card to the wrong port group. So once I've changed that, I'm now able to ping um, and we'll be fine to go to stage two now. So close that. It should automatically open up uh, the next stage of the install. Um, otherwise what I'll do, I'll go to Firefox and So, so, okay, to access the vCenter install or stage two, just go to the IP address or the uh, fully qualified domain name. Uh, we port 5480. We use 5480 to do any configuration on the appliance after the install as well. So next step will be to set up. Same root and password that you added before. Next. Just verify all the settings there. Um, synchronize with the host. The host uh, synchronizes with NTP server. Uh, SSH I'll just leave it disabled at the moment. Type already. Um, This will be the username password to sign in to administrator at vSphere.local and just your password for vCenter. Now you would want to use the HTML5, which is very nice now, it's 6.7. All right, so now we have a empty um, appliance. Nothing's been configured, so we'll just create a new data center. Uh, let's just call it data center 01. New cluster. And so cluster. Uh, you can enable this now or later. No. Uh, no problem enabling it later. Um, not sure if, why you'd do vSAN now, um, or if you could even do it now. Um, usually, I'll just do all these later once the host has been added in. So, create the cluster. The next step will be to add in the add in the hosts, which is only going to be one on this occasion. Hosts. 
and you want to use the fully qualified domain name, which will be, uh, what was the name for that one? I think it was ESX. ESX host two, ESX I host two. And with your local uh, details. So I've got the same password for for that. Um, let's pick it up. So the reason you would do this is because once it's added into vCenter, um, much easier to identify the server rather than just having an IP address come up in here. Um, so it'll take a while, it shows disconnected initially. And once it's joined in, it will come up as healthy and under the cluster object. And adds in all the VMs that have already sitting on that server. Um, something you might want to do straight away, just uh, ensure the NTP settings are set. Um, so have a look here, just on the system, time configuration. And no, no, I've got it disabled there, so you can just set up um, NTP on one of your servers or online. So that's it for this video. We've gone through the process of deploying the vCenter appliance onto a ESX host, creating a cluster and adding the host in. Um, in future videos, I'll be looking at um, specifically uh, the appliance configuration, so including um, configuring the time, syslog and backup of the vCenter appliance. Um, I'll also look at Active Directory authentication, VMware update manager, HA best practices, and any other videos that might be useful. So if you like this uh, video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and have a great day. Cheers.